my friends, I'm Frankie, and welcome to Club Foodie. Easter is just around the corner, and you wonder what to serve your guests. Maybe a nice pork roast, leg of lamb? What about prime rib? Or a light and flaky grilled salmon, hmm? Most of us will probably opt for the traditional ham, like my brown sugar mustard glazed ham, or this delicious one. In today's episode, I'll show you how to make my Grand Carrasso orange glazed ham. It's just incredible. The glaze is what makes this recipe so special. It's a delicious blend of earthy, sweet, tangy, and buttery flavor, which marries perfectly with the ham. So my friends, let's get cooking. Let's start by making the glaze. In a small saucepan over medium heat, we'll add butter, and when it's melted, we'll add marmalade. I have an amazing homemade recipe. So check it out by clicking on the top right corner of your screen. We'll also add a brown sugar, followed by Grand Caresso, some prepared mustard, minced ginger, chopped dried rosemary, ground cloves, a little salt, let's not go crazy with it, and freshly ground black pepper. We'll stir very well and heat the mixture until the gelatin from the marmalade is all melted. You'll see little chunks like this one, so just try to break them down, okay? When they're melted, we'll let it cook for two minutes so the glaze thickens. When time is up, we'll simply remove from the heat to cool up while we prep the ham. This is a nice, beautiful smoked bone in ham. But it's wet, so just like other meat, we'll pat it dry using paper towels. To make it look nicer, we'll score the skin diagonally, making a crisscross pattern with about an inch in between. It doesn't show much now, but it will when it's cooked. Next, we'll prep our baking pan. Of course, you can always use a roasting pan and line it with foil to catch any spills. We'll now place our rack to help the air circulate and cook the meat evenly. Then we'll place the ham flat side down in a prepared pan. The glaze has been transferred to a measuring cup because it's a good indication of how much to use at first. It usually yields one and two thirds of a cup. So what we'll do is to pour half of it over the ham and brush it on evenly. Oops, <laughs> I cut the skin a little too much and just realized there are a couple pieces of skin missing. But it's okay because with the glaze on top, not only it will fill them up, but also protect the meat from drying out. Next, we'll cover it loosely with foil, creating some sort of a tent before transferring to a 350 degree preheated oven. We'll cook for one hour and 45 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll remove from the heat and pour half of the remaining glaze, brushing it evenly. Then we'll return the ham to the oven, this time uncovered, for 15 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And look how nice it is. Mm, mm, mm. That's a beauty. So what we'll do now is to add the remaining glaze and brush it on evenly, then cover loosely again and let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes before serving. And my friends, this is our Grand Carrasso orange glazed ham. This is absolutely amazing. Obviously, the glaze is the star of this recipe. Although it pairs incredibly well with ham, it can also be used on pork tenderloin, pork chops, chicken, and fish. This is definitely a keeper. 
I hope you give it a try soon and be sure to visit clubfoodie.com for ingredient amounts, directions and more info. Until next time my friends, bon appétit! Thank <laughs> you.